And it was a pretty out of the box jive. And I, that was the one time I got nominated for an Emmy with choreography. And oh, with that Panic song. With the Panic at the Disco song. Wow. But that was the, one of the dances that got me the Emmy nomination. Like anyone who knows me well, like Derek will tell you, like we were talking about this the other day. He's like, man, when you do something, you do it. Like I'm in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Did you ever do Blackpool? Oh yeah. yeah. How was that competition? It's good. I actually got injured in my first season. I did Jersey Boys. 2016, 2017, so. And you were Frankie Valley. I was Frankie, yeah, I played Frankie in that. Um, and I was the last guy to do it on Broadway because it closed um, at the end of my run. Once I discovered Nirvana, it was like... Game over. It was a wrap, yeah. Your favorite choreography out of all pop music, of all the music videos, would it be Thriller? Thriller. Or Smooth Criminal. Smooth, the dance break in Smooth Criminal, when he comes out at the... Ah, and then the music break. That, that section of music, let alone the choreography, that music is the funkiest piece of music. Still to this day, like I get full body goosebumps when I hear that piece. That dunk 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 Oh my god, like it's my favorite piece of music. And then when he tips the hat, it's just like I get goosebumps talking about it. Who do you think is the best dancer of all the pop stars? MJ? Oh, it's so tough, isn't it? I mean MJ is definitely one of the best for sure, of course. Iconic, um pioneer. But you know, there's been lots, right? So, but um, for me, yeah, MJ. Like I watched when I watched MJ, I was like, I remember my dad told me he would put the Thriller music video on, and I would like hide behind the couch because I was afraid. <laughs> but then, like he said, I'd be like popping up because I wanted to see MJ dance, you know. <laughs> but I was terrified at the same time. Derek Huff was absolutely here for you being a judge, <laughs> but is Mark here for being a uh, judge? I mean, I I I enjoyed the uh, the process. It was really fun. Um, I had said to, I was talking to Derek about it and some of the others and just saying like, I did this, I did the show for 20 seasons, uh, 18 straight, took a year off, went back for season, took five years off, came back for season. And after doing the show for that long, it was pretty cool to still find a new experience, you know, because it was just as intense in a different way, you know. Had you been watching the entire season prior? I had, yeah, I had. And to prepare for judging, I actually went back and watched season 31, 32, and 33, like over the week like I watched the, the all of them just, just to see how you would rate people yeah I, I scored myself I wouldn't watch I would just score it myself first to not be influenced by any other judges or stuff like that and it's cool to go back and even score myself and being like oh, maybe I would have give that a little bit less or a little bit more you know um, with in season 31 but yeah like I went back and you know studied <laughs> <laughs> the know. fan response loved having you there i, I was very uh, grateful for that you know i was um excited to be there and i was a little overwhelmed and um you know very grateful for the response it's been really good was there anything challenging about being in that seat versus being on the ballroom floor for you uh you mean from competing to judging yeah because now you're like you said taking it on from a completely different aspect yeah i, I wouldn't say it was challenging in the sense um, because like there's nothing like competing like it is it is quite an experience I would say that there's a um, I did feel like a responsibility because again like I, w I was now a, a judge on the panel that had walked in their shoes I'd been there I've had great scores I've had bad scores I've been overscored I've been underscored you know so I I understand it from kind of every angle and I think my um my my thing going into it was there were so many times I remember as a competitor where I would get feedback and it would be great, but at the same time I'm like, we're not doing this dance again. So I don't I don't get a redo. So for me it was like, how can I give um, constructive criticism or feedback or some tips that you can take moving forward? Because there are a lot of technical aspects, performative aspects that 
apply to all five ballroom dances and all five Latin dances. So, like, I'll use Steven as an example. Like, he had some frame stuff going on when I watched, and I was, that's why I tried to give him the two diagonal lines, because he can use that in every ballroom dance. It's not just for the Argentine tango, which I believe he was doing that week. Um, that was kind of my goal. Like, I really want to give things, I'm like, hey, could have been better here, but take this with you moving forward. Not like, here's a tip, you're never doing that dance again. <laughs> right. Unless you get to the final, because... You know, there can be redemption. There is a redemption round where you can get one back, you know, but we don't know what it's going to be, so... What's up, guys? Real quick, today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel. And it is all gravy this weekend on FanDuel, which means you're getting a feast of rewards all weekend long. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat NFL same-game parlay to celebrate the occasion. Just place a three-leg same-game parlay. You'll get bonus bets back if your bet doesn't win. NFL same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payday. Build your own or choose from one of the popular SGPs pre-built for you in FanDuel's top-rated sportsbook app. So what are you waiting for? Start your feast now with a no sweat, same game parlay on America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Visit fanduel.com slash lightweights to get started today. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Again, if you want to support this podcast, go to fanduel.com slash lightweights to get started today. Now back to the episode with Mark Ballas. How was it when you coached him to redo your Charlie dance? It was great. He is just lovely. And I've, I've known Riley since she was four. So I have a photo with her. It's just so funny that like she's literally like... <laughs> And now she's she's taller than me now. It's just like a trip. So, Is it crazy to see her now competing? Oh, yeah. I'm just so proud of her. It's just like, you know, it's wild. Makes well, me feel very old. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first... Do you recall your first interaction with the Arnold sisters? Oh, man. Like, it's... I've known them a long time because I used to teach at um, one of the schools in Utah. And um, they just met my parents. My mom coached the Arnold sisters as well. So they've, you know, we've always been kind of a tight-knit group and it's such a small industry too like everybody has either trained with my mom and dad or somehow like you know I've known Val and Max since I was 10 you know like we go Ma Val and I competed together since we were babies oh, wow. I have a photo for you I'll, I'll give it just hilarious Love it. <laughs> <laughs> was there a lot of pressure for you coming from such an uh champion ballroom family on the show for growing up like, was it, it was destined for you to be such an incredible dancer. I mean, three-time ballroom champion is uh, thank insane. You. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I don't know. Like, it, at the time, when I was young, because my parents were multiple, like, ten-time U.S. Open champions and three-time British Open to the World champion. I hope I got that right, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, you got it wrong. <laughs> Something like that. Um and I think when I was young, it was always something that was like, oh, that's what mom and dad did. It's for adults. And I, I, um, I always did like dance classes and th I went to theater school a lot. So um, I would do my – during the day, Monday to Friday was school. And on the weekends, I went to um, a theater school in the UK where we would do you know singing, dance, tap, ballet, theater, acting classes. Um, but the ballroom thing I never really got into till later when I saw other kids my age doing it. So I never, I wouldn't say I ever felt a, a pressure to walk in their footsteps. They never forced me into it. Well, my parents were really good. If I showed interest in something, they were always very supportive and like, well, let's get you some lessons in that and see what you think, you know. So, but later when it started, when we started competing and, you know, it gets serious when you compete. Yeah. Where'd you find your love for Broadway? Was it there? Oh, just ever since I was a kid. I think like, man, like watching like to me like we were talking about michael jackson before this like thriller that's so theatrical right like things like that just the production the production of it the like oh we're not just singing and dancing here we're put we're doing it all and that's what broadway is that's what theater is that's what west end is to me it's like you got to do it all and um, i just always loved that idea of being able to dance sing act and be on stage with other people that do the same and you're sharing and there's connection and I was just always fascinated with that so my as a child growing up I um I had lessons in everything like ballet tap jazz guitar lessons my dad was a flamenco guitar player growing up so I started playing guitar when I was nine what's so a flamenco guitar flamenco like oh. like the style like you know very Spanish type flamenco guitar so that's what got me into that so my whole life, it's always been all of it. It's not just been one. Like, even when I was very serious into competing in the ballroom world, 
like like a week at school for me was I went to a theater school, which was you know we'd have our academics, but we also had theater classes during school hours. During school hours, right? So it was half and half. And then when I would get home, you know, on Mondays there would be ballroom lessons or Latin lessons, and on Tuesday I'd have a guitar lesson. On Wednesday it would be ballroom lessons. On Friday I'd have guitar lessons and singing lessons after school. And then on the weekends we would go compete ballroom competition so that was my life like, was that all in the uk all in the uk yeah did you ever travel abroad for those competitions yes yeah we would compete like um there's a big circuit like there's man we've competed in everywhere from america england italy spain germany singapore japan everywhere wow yeah did you ever do blackpool oh yeah, yeah. how was that competition it's good is Got it a, crazy? Like yeah, intense? It's intense, yeah. yeah. I was, um, <laughs> you know, me and Val competed together at Blackpool a couple of times. Wow. Um, Blackpool's kind of the, it's the one, you know. But there's 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 a few big competitions throughout the year. Blackpool being one, the international and the UK. Those And then the worlds. Those are like, there are other massive competitions that all lead to those. But uh, those are the, you know, the big ones. So when you see all these other people like Val at Dancing with the Stars, is it kind of just like, a reunion of all these guys. Um, yeah, yeah. We've we've known each other literally since we were ten years old. You know, like I have photos of Val and I that are just so wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, 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 you know, we were kids, all skinny, and then like, you know, be, becoming sixteen and competing in the youth and like thinking we're buff. <laughs> you know, like, and then um, competing for years together. You know, he danced for America, I danced for England, and then um, you know, so at Worlds we would be there. You know, he was representing America, I was representing England, and then, um, yeah, just all, our whole lives. And then I got on dancing. I stopped competing because I wanted to, um, I was just done. Like, I felt like I'd kind of done what I wanted to do in that realm, and I moved back into, I wanted to do theater, I wanted to play music, I wanted to tour and, and do that. And um, Tour my, doing theater? Uh, or music, like, uh, just... I just didn't want to compete in dancing anymore because I just had done it for so long and I felt like I'd... You did I, it. I did it. I did yeah. what I wanted to do in it. You know, could we? Could you take it f further? Of course, always, like anything. But I was just... I was done at the time. And um, yeah, like my first like professional gig out of college, was, I was in the Buddy Holly musical as the... Um, I understudied Richie Valens and I played uh, in the first act. I was just like a guitar player, and then the second act, I played drums in the Clear Lake concert. And then I was the understudy for Richie Valens. So that was my first gig. It was a ten-month tour, different city in England every week. So that was like my first like real gig, you know. And every time you step out on that stage, are you just fully immersing yourself in that experience? What do you take away from it? I I am like that. Like when I'm doing something, I'm doing it a hundred percent. I can't do. 80% on anything like anyone who knows me well like Derek will tell you like we were talking about this the other day He's like man when you do something you do it like I'm in it you know what I mean it doesn't matter what it is so um I just that's just who I am you know it's got to be 200% or I'm out you know so you've always been obsessed with whatever you were doing yes yes very much so do you think that's your your path to greatness to where you are I'm not sure like I just think it's my path for like for how I'm able to apply myself to something like I have to be immersed in it I want if I'm genuinely interesting interested in something I want to know everything about it like even if it's like l like my wife makes fun of me because like I'm a big latte guy <laughs> and I'm like learning how to make latte art like the YouTube videos I'm watching all day like trying to learn I'm not good at it yet <laughs> yet is the key word I need actually need a different machine she's like we're good with this machine we don't need another one <laughs> I guess you were, see you working at a cafe just yeah, to get the experience like like I'm so in like it doesn't matter what it is like I'm 100 percent in so that's where all that research for the judging came in yes like like I wasn't gonna wing it like because I believe as a judge, it's not about you. That's your moment to give something that the couples can move forward, right? And I just like, I may, I had notes for everyone. I wanted to make sure that I had something of substance, hopefully that they could take with them moving forward. And I took that very seriously because I, I know what it's like to have partners of all skill sets where, you know, you, it can be frustrating and sometimes hearing that outside perspective might help the penny drop either for the celebrity or for the pro. You're like, oh yeah, 
yeah, I could take that. That makes sense. How is it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, there's nothing worse than like being like, how do I fix that? You know, right. It's tough. It's tough. Because I remember you talking to Steven, like you said, with those, even I at home took that. I'm like, oh, what an interesting tidbit. Yeah, yeah. That's an old one, honestly, from, I've heard that over the years. Um, and that was the thing is like, man, how do I go back to when I was training and try and remember some of the stuff that my teachers would tell me? And the diagonal lines one was a really, I remembered that so vividly as, as a kid working on my frame because, you know, frame is hard. It is hard. Like to stay in that shape for a minute, a minute and 20, minute 30, depending how long the dance is that week, it's not easy. We've gotten a little more um, uh, loose with the rules. There's a lot of frame breaking these days. But back in the day, all we would get, Len wasn't having it, just wasn't having it, you know. And there's also <laughs> a different, there's a difference between international style that's in frame the whole time or american style which you can Loosey break goosey. would know what you can break you know there's side by side sections you can do that it's still very difficult but international style you're like this the whole time <laughs> you know so did you approach it in the sense of how judging competitions over seas and like those big competitions would judge things uh no because it's very different it's very like have you ever watched a big competition? I've seen clips of like right. Rapple. So like, yeah, you're you're out there. You've got your number on your back, and there could be anywhere from twelve judges. They're all walking around the floor at the same time. They're not talking to each other, just marking their pad. You know. Whereas on this, um, you're judging it from. It's a pro am. It's a pro am pro amateur viewpoint. You know. Like, I'm very aware that everyone here is a working extremely hard putting in so many hours and trying to remember so many things at once so from the judge's standpoint i'm just like okay i can see, i can i can see it immediately i can see like once you take the frame i'm like the shoulder <laughs> the hips you know like so i was just like i really just wanted to give them something that hopefully will last a few weeks you know do you think the producers enjoyed having four judges back together i hope so i mean i'm not sure you know i think um it's a lot to fit in in a two-hour show because there's so much going on. And I think the show has done a, a really brilliant job at bringing it back to its core. You know, Conrad is just – Conrad Green is just great. I love Conrad and Dina. Like, they're just so great at what they do. And I think um, – They've been on the show for – Well, Conrad and – well, Dina's been on from the beginning. She's the best, right? And then Conrad was around for a long time. He started it, and then he went on to do some other shows, I think, and then he came back. And when he came back, um, you could just see the show really getting back to what it was, you know. And it's so cool to see the, the a newer fan base coming in and people discovering it. Like, it's my first time watching it. It's like it's season 33. It's your first time watching it. Yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. I mean, that's my first time watching it's it. It's awesome. Like, I, 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 I love that to see that, um, you know, what the show, the magic that it creates and what it was when it first started is kind of back. You know, that's cool to me. I think what's so special, too, is that it is a real competition. It's filmed live. Yeah. Whatever happens in that two hours is what you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, you were there the other day. Was that your first time live? First time live. What would you think? Incredible. There's right? so many moving pieces. So many things can go wrong. So many things can go right. Oh, yeah. It's 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 really takes a family to make a show of that magnitude come together because did, did you find it more intense in the room or do you find it more intense watching on tv it's different to view it on tv because you have all those different focal points sure yeah yeah yeah. but to see it live you get to see the stresses of everyone leading up i see riley and steven walking to their positions i see brandon the deep and breaths are taking yes. oh yeah i feel that all yeah. that stuff you see them like locking in i mean still like uh, you were there for derek and i's pre-tape we did right even the two we've done this so many times the two of us before all serious, like yeah. trying to like, you know, settle, be grounded. You have to be grounded. It's so easy to sometimes let um, adrenaline take the wheel. And that, um, you know, that sucks when that happens because you know that it's all about being grounded and staying locked in, you know. So, um, yeah, it's high pressure situation, you know. What mindset do you get into when the crowd lights dim and there's just a spotlight on you and Derek? Oh, I mean, you know, I said for years, like when I came back for season 31 with Charlie and that first dance we did together and you hear the dancing, the track, and you hear the, announcement, I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. And your heart is just like, and then you hear the clicks that you heard those clicks in the room, right? The dip, dip, dip. That's when you're like, here we go. You and still get nervous. Well, it's, 
it, or the adrenaline kick. Yeah, yeah, it's nerves. It's a hundred percent nerves. It's nerves. It's adrenaline. It's um, and having to just breathe through it. One of the most important things I think, I'm sure, is in any form of entertainment or even athleticism is you have to be in touch with your breath. You have to stay grounded. Like, cause if you start to, you, it'll you can gas out. Your adrenaline get the better of you. You know, get the jitters. But yeah, of course, you still feel that like, oh yeah, we're doing this and we're doing it live now. You know, <laughs> and then that's it. And then you blink and it's over. You know. Which is kind of a trip. <laughs> <laughs> when you and Derek did that dance, is one of you taking lead? So this is a cool thing about the tango we did is that we shared lead. So typically, you know, when you're dancing leader follower, your ex your um, leader is leading and followers following, right? Unless choreographically there's some sort of move that's counterbalancing and someone else takes over. What was cool about doing tango with two men? is that the lead would switch in in the middle of a move or a rotation. And then w at one part, Derek would be leading, and then we would switch directions, and then I'm leading. Is that based on who's grounded? Well, it, it, yes and no. It kind of just d depends on the figure. But what I will say, with the lead switch, the speed that you can generate is pretty... Um, there was Once we got comfortable, because we had to... Our prep for that was... Pretty wild. So I had to go. On, Derek's on tour right now for Dancing with Dance with the Holidays, Derek Huff show, which you should go see when it comes to LA because it's fantastic. Seventeenth of December. It is you that's I'll see you there. See you there. <laughs> um, it is really great. So, in order to get this together, I had to tour with him. So I we flew. We took a red eye to Chicago. We got to Chicago. We rehearsed for five hours during the day. Then he had to get ready for the show. He had a meet and greet. He then had a two-hour show. He then comes off stage, sh ice bath, shower, meet and greet, He because he loves to go and see people that hang out after the show. So I was doing those with him. And then we would rehearse for another three hours before the bus call. That night? That night. Oh, my and God. And then the bus call, we went to, where did we go? We were Chicago, Ohio, Indianapolis, and New York. So then we would drive overnight to these cities. You're sleeping in the bunk? I'm in the bunk. Wow. Yeah. And then... Uh, we would do it all over again, and that's how we got ready for this. It was, and he like him doing a show as well. Like it was pretty, pretty epic. However, he got a great warm up. <laughs> <laughs> he was warmed up. <laughs> he was ready to go. But for that's weeks. how that's how we uh, got it together. It was um, an intense week, you know. Who did the choreography for it? We did it together. Yeah. What is that like when the two of you come together? Just like it's like the gods coming down. <laughs> it, 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 for uh, for me, it's just us being kids again. You know, because this is what we did. We grew up together. We we lived together. He moved in to my house in the UK when he was eleven or twelve, and we've went to theater school together. We competed together. We shared a room. He would steal all my clothes. Still steals my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> like. I'll come in, I'll be wearing, like, like let's use his hat, for example. And he's like, nice hat. Make fun of me for the hat. A week later, wearing the hat. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that? Where, where'd you take I'm like, that I from? see. Still to this day. So to me, I loved it because we've never, that's never been done. We've never done that on the show. We've danced together. We've danced side by side. We've never danced together. So again, 20 years on the show or 20 seasons, another new experience and doing it with, you know, my brother essentially like we're essentially brothers we're best friends but he's essentially brothers he was the best man at my wedding i was the best man at his wedding and getting to have that moment together was pretty it's pretty powerful it was cool i want to come back to you guys growing up together yeah but what kind of toll did that dance take on your body because that's a lot of bending that's so fast oh, yeah. paced i mean yeah lucky for derek he's doing you know he's doing five six shows a week right now so he's in he's conditioned um and I was I trained for this like I, I had like about a, a month five weeks to get ready for it, and I was in the studio training with practicing with other partners and this just, dance. No, just getting my body used braced for impact. Mm. <laughs> you know because um, it, it it is a lot of rotation. It is a lot of like speed and generation and um you know so I was in the gym and like getting in shape for it and stuff like that. But but still like. Still hurts. <laughs> you know? are, are you taking ice baths after? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You I, have to. You have to. Yeah, you just have to. Like, you get used to it, you know, so I am... Um, Massages? 
massages, all that stuff. Like I do a lot of foam rolling. Foam rolling is like clutch. Stretching. Stretch it. Got got to stretch. You got to do it. like it's so funny. I was talking about this the other day when we were kids. We'd you know roll up in there and just dance like cold no stretch. Like now if I do that, no, nah. no, no, no. no. <laughs> Like when I was dancing with Charlie, I had a whole forty-five minute morning routine that <laughs> what I did. She did. Do? No, no, I would do it at home before I even got there. And if I missed it, like I just had the worst day ever. <laughs> you know, I just imagine she just rolls in because she was eighteen, nineteen at that time. Yeah, eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, but she, you know, she was pretty. Um, she's pretty diligent about being stretched and warmed up, and you know, but she's young, so right. Yeah. So growing up. You and Derek would do all these classes together. Oh, yeah. So did you just basically have a permanent dance partner all the time that was ready to go? Well, I, I mean, y- yeah. We were always, like, making up combos. And, like, it's funny. The other day we found all these home videos of us, like, just dancing and singing. And, you know, and and Derek said, like, oh, we were TikToking before TikTok. Like, it's it's when I see the young kids come up and I was like, oh, I we used to do this when we were kids. It's so cool to see, you know. So many young kids getting into dance and expressing themselves. It's it's we did all that when we were kids. Were you know? both of you always just obsessed with it growing up? Did you ever fall out of love with it? I did, yeah. I think we both have. Like, it, you know, it, it, you uh, you definitely go through waves, of course. Yeah, like when I was done competing, like in the circuit, like I was definitely needing a break. And I was doing the theater thing. I was like playing in my band. I was like in a metal band, you know, I was doing all the stuff. You were in Slipknot? I wish. <laughs> I, I literally. You're that clown? <laughs> literally would be the best thing ever. Um, but yeah, I was burned out from competing for sure. And then I was doing theater for a while. And then I got the call from, I sent in a tape for Dancing with the Stars with Derek. We both sent in tapes. And uh, we got a, we got the call uh, on a Friday, and we had literally had a couple days to make this decision of moving from England. Like, keep in mind, we were living in England at the time. It wasn't like, you know, we were already here. Um, so, yeah, we – they asked if – because here's the thing. When you compete, it's really hard to do the show at the same time because Blackpool – back then we did two seasons a year. So Blackpool is the same week as the finale of the – of the spring season and then the international is is during the winter season so if you're a serious competitor you're still in that circle you, c- you can't do the show so once um we had finished competing you know we'd sent in tapes and stuff and and then we both got offered the show like literally we got calls five minutes apart and i just remember i was like are we doing that? are we going and he was like we should go let's do it i was like all right so like literally moved out two days later after we got the call Came to L.A. Um, my dad helped us get an apartment. We shared an apartment. Like, literally had a back. Oh, you and Derek shared Oh, yeah, yeah, We came out together from England, you know, because he was doing Footloose in the West End. Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's the gig he was doing at the time. He just finished that. I did Buddy Holly. And then, uh, yeah, we moved here. I had a backpack, a suitcase, and a guitar case. That was it. And we moved here. Yeah. So was your musical run that time finished or did you yeah i just finished yeah i was wow what actually, timing i was about to go into there was a musical in the west end called we will rock you i think they, it came out here on tour queen, or something. Right? yeah queen musical and i just booked that and um the choreographer and casting director arlene phillips who used to be a judge on strictly come dancing was which is the uk version correct yeah um you know i was like oh we will rock you she was like go do dancing with stars like you can always come back to theater i was like okay <laughs> wow. You know, because I didn't know. I didn't know what the show was going to be or how popular it was going to be. It was, you know, it, we just didn't know. So what, what happened that very first season? Was it everything you expected? Oh, no. It was like I'd never experienced anything like that. It was such a – it was such a unique experience, you know. And um, I, you know, never lived in America. I'd been to America many times to see my dad's side of the family, but I was raised in the U.K. and I was in England my whole life. I would come – uh, back to America, like for sometimes in the summer and the Christmas Christmas time, and if we were competing, we were here a lot, you know. But I'd never like lived here, you know. So it was like learning all that, you know. And then um, being on the show was just such a unique experience, like out the gate as someone who I was twenty one. I was twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. TV star. Like it was just what well, to me it was just insane, you know. Was there a, a tour that followed right after? Yes, Did it you was. do that? I did. Yeah, yeah. So my first season, I actually got injured in my first season 
in, during the finale. So my first partner, Sabrina Bryan, who was a fantastic, fantastic dancer, um, we got eliminated early, I think week six. Um, and then we, back in the day, they would have all the contestants come back um, and compete, not compete, sorry, they would, they would dance in the finale. And in the finale, I dislocated my shoulder live on the air. <laughs> About 10 seconds in. Did you pop it back in? No. <laughs> so like, you could see it. It's horrible. So I did this spin and dropped to the ground, and it just, I don't know, just all the right things hit at the right time, and my arm was, like, out the socket. So I finished the dance. That's the worst pain, right? It, it wasn't great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it again. My adrenaline was hot, though, so, like, I kind of knew something was up, but I was just so in it, and, like, I wasn't going to stop, like, because we are just, you know... We just don't do that. <laughs> so we finished the dance. I remember I went up to Tom Bergeron. He like slapped me on the shoulder. He's like, great job. I was like, oh, you know, and then literally walked off. Derek put his hand on my back and was like, we got to get an ambulance over here. They took me to the hospital, put it back in place, had to have surgery. It was a whole thing. So that was my first season, you know. Has it popped out since? No. Oh, that's great. No, thank God. Yeah. And then tour was amazing. Tour was So I went on the tour, like still recovering from surgery and like slowly worked my way back into the tour but like i would safety pin my jacket to myself and it was like a sling <laughs> you know so then the second season are you hoping that they call you back to do it again of course like because it was again my first season i hadn't proved myself yet like i didn't still learning the ropes you know you know was, was new to teaching and choreographing like we're learning these things as we go you know and my second season i had um christy Yamaguchi. How'd that come out? It was great. It was great. She was amazing to work with, yeah. Where'd you place in that? We won that one. Right. Yeah, we won, <laughs> we won that one. Yeah, it was, it was a good season. We, we um, She was so great to work with, and um, yeah, I, I hadn't gotten um, hadn't gotten that far in the competition before, so that was, it's a trip. Like, you get, you, like, when you're a newer pro, you learn these things later. Like, once you start to get into that week seven, week eight, week nine, it's like, oh, Wow, it's intense, especially when you have two dances a week. So do you see that experience happening with Riley? Yes, like, like, you know, she, um, well, where did she come last season? Like, semifinals, right? So the final is a whole different thing, right? And I can see, like, and Brandon, I've known Brandon since he was little, too, you know? I've known Jenna for years. I've, I've known them all for, for years, you know, so... Um, but Br Brandon and Riley are, are newer, right? So it's um, really cool to see them both shine and um, take it this far. But it's a whole different thing when you have to do – because it's a lot already to choreograph a one-minute 30 dance once a week on top of all the interviews you got to do, the rehearsal, the choreography, trial and error. Is there even more interviews now with social media? Uh, I'm not sure if they – I think the show has they, – they're they've got it down to a science. They're really good at – how they do their interviews. I got the best in the business, right? But it's, um, and when you're like all of a sudden like, oh, now I have to do two dances. And you're also like, I'm the type of person, if I set something and it's not working, you got to change it. And you got to not be afraid to make changes. Obviously, if your partner is comfortable with the changes, right? But if you know like, oh, th this could be better or whatever, like, so you're always trying to, put the jigsaw puzzle together as you're going. And then when you do that with two dances, that's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. So do you think that they're mastering that first one and then they start working on the second one or do they do them simultaneously? So over the years I've changed, I can't speak to what everyone's strategy is, but everyone has a different move, right? Which so yours? it's changed over the years. Cause I've noticed if I go too hard on one, then the other one, you're behind on the other one, right? So then, but then you catch up with that one, but then you have to re-remember this one. So in my last couple of seasons, I, what I would, I tried to do them kind of both in increments if it was not um, like too much mentally for, or physically for the partner. Like I'm like, are you comfortable with doing both at the same time? Would you rather learn one and then learn the other? And then, when you're warming up for the second one, hey, let's go over the other one to warm up and then we'll move to the other one. So I've noticed later that kind of having them come together at the same time is good if it's possible, you know. How do you think your experience on Dancing with the Stars compares to the pros this season of Dancing with the Stars? Oh, man. I mean, I think the, the closest um, experience I could say that's similar to the one they're living now is mine with Charlie on season 31. 
Um, but like the vintage days back in the day, like, you know, we didn't know what song we were getting. They were pulling dances. They were just throwing them at you. You know, you had Len, who was, you know, one of the the greats of our industry. And, like, he was calling you out on stuff, you know, like. So it, it was it's just different. But, however, you can never get too comfortable because the show is so innovative and creative that they're always there's a new challenge there's a new theme like that instant dance they just did that five minute thing i was like oh man that shit was intense you know so we did something similar to that but we didn't have five minutes like they were literally rehearsing on the floor i was like wow that's which i love that's what's fun right like especially for long time viewers is to see you know new challenges or new ways of doing things you know so i right. think the show is really good at that can we talk about some of your partners? So there's Lindsey Sterling, sure. Kim Kardashian, yep. Charlie D'Amelio. Mm -hmm. Incredible experiences. Paige Van Zandt. Yep. Can we focus on Paige Van Zandt sure. as a physical competitor? You had an interview with her recently, right? Yeah, and I asked her about you. Yeah, Paige she loved great. it. Yeah, Paige she wants great. to do it again. Really? Yes. Interesting. So you might have to come back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's great, man. She was a powerhouse. Powerhouse. Like When you get an athlete like that, do you see a very different level of intensity versus like an actress or because you see all these different people from yeah, different fields yeah for sure i think with the athletes they're used to discipline and training and um going hard you know what i mean like um and especially fighting the ufc and you know mma and boxers and wrestlers or bare knuckle bare knuckle fighting now you know that's a whole different intensity you know so um yeah, she was. She's tough, tough, ready, worked hard. We had fun, had a laugh. You know, um, she got. To t she took us to. Um, she took my wife and I to a UFC fight, which was really cool. Was she fighting? She wasn't. John Jones was fighting though. I think I can't remember what. what... Not this one in New York. Was no, it? no, no. This was oh. what, back when we were dancing together. So we got to do that. Um, but yeah, she was. She was strong, strong dancer, strong performer, great char charisma on the floor. You know, just like. One of, we, I had some fun routines with her. Like, I loved our jive together where we wore, I think we wore all red. That one was really fun. Um, what other ones did we have that I really liked? We did a UFC fight dance where they put an octagon in and the whole thing was like a a fight dance, which was kind of interesting. Um, and then we had a Viennese wall, so it was really beautiful. I loved our Argentine tango. That was kind of fun, too. We had some good ones. Yeah, she's great. What was the experience like with Kim Kardashian? Hilarious. We had a blast. Like, I, lo I love Kim. Like, we had a really good time together. You know, I wouldn't say that, you know, dancing was at the top of her list of things, but, you know, we had fun. We, um, you know, well, how many, how, I can't remember what week we go in. I think week three or four, maybe earlier, which like looking back, like I would, uh, if I had her now, I wonder if I could like, you know, shape it a little different. Um, but yeah, we did, we had a, um, one of our dances, I think it was a mambo to baby got back. Which like has gone viral a few times, and it's like a meme. And I see it, I'm just like, oh god, I was going way too hard. I should have like dialed it down. Like I was going hard in that video, but but I was young. I was I was you know I was new. I was trying to figure it out myself, you know. But like doing, if I could revisit that, I probably would have like turned the volume down to eight, maybe not be eleven. <laughs> but she was great. Like you know, we had a good time. Was fan voting a big thing back then with her season? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, it's always been. I'm not sure what the if that if the structure of that has changed. I'm sure that I know there's been different point systems or whatever. But yeah, the fan vote and mix with judges scoring is kind of, you know, what it is. Right. You know, when did Charlie D'Amelio bring you out of dance retirement? I wouldn't say that. Like, it, there's been, you know, many rumors that that she pulled me out of. Like, I'd never met Charlie before. You know, so I know Derek did a one off with her. And it seemed, you see people are like, oh, well, she danced with Derek for She danced Derek for a day. That doesn't make you a ballroom expert in a day, you know, like literally a day. And he was dragging her around and whatever. But I had never I had never met her yet. And um, honestly, after my season, the season before, I took a, I took a five year break because I went I was doing Kinky Boots on Broadway. And then there was a global pandemic, you know, um, my wife and I were touring, playing shows, lots of other stuff going on. And um I remember this clear as day. I was outside with my wife. I think my mom was in town too. And we were just cleaning our steps. I was in a swimsuit, just hair out, you know, just like cleaning our steps. My phone rings and I pick it up and it's Dina Katz. And I was just like, hey, Dina, what's up? 
She's like, I'd love to get on a call with you later. I was like, sure. And that was when I first found out that Conrad was coming back. And then, do you would you be interested in doing another season? He's a producer, Conrad. Yeah, he's one of the executive producers, along with Dina Katz is casting director and executive producer. So when I heard Conrad was coming back, I was like, I'm interested, you know, because I I just love Conrad. He gets the show. He's great. Um, so that was the f- step one to seeing like oh, but I hadn't. I'd performed. I'd you know I try my best to stay in shape, but you know dance shape is a whole different like like I was just saying you got to get ready for impact. So. I um, said, I'm definitely interested. Let's talk a bit more. And um, my mom was in town. Actually, she'd already left. So I flew my mom back to train me for three weeks just to see if I still had it in there, you know, because so, wow. my mom was my coach my whole life. Derek's coach, Julianne's coach, everyone's coach, Val's coach. My mom's trained like everyone, you know, my dad, too. So I said, Mom, I get, I get, you got to come out here and, like, you know, kick my ass for three weeks. And she did. And um, she's like, yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be all right. So then, um, yeah, then we just kept talking, and I was I was into it. Yeah, I was down, you know. And um, my wife and I were trying for a family at the time, and, you know, we were having some downtime, and I was like, okay, I'll, uh, I'll do it. Yeah. Wow. And that's kind of how it all started. So when you get a partner like Charlie, yeah, do you lean into those assets of what – skill set she has obviously she knew how to dance but her body build is different than pages who might be able to carry you for lifts and whatnot exactly yeah yeah, yeah. of course of course so Um, everyone has their perks yeah it's i always say this this show it's so unique you know and i feel like um even if you have someone with experience or some someone who has no experience sometimes the unlearning is just as hard as the learning I believe there are people that are naturally gifted, you know, um, and I think I also believe in sometimes people just dance well together. Like there's a chemistry, not I wouldn't say chemistry. I just mean like a vibe, like a vibe when you dance with someone, like you touch hands and it's electric and, and it works. And then there's other partnerships where you have to work at it and you build it. And over time it happens, you know, like same thing with anything, right? You, you got to work hard at it. So you know, with Charlie, the thing for me with her that still to this day, like that that girl's attitude and her work ethic and her commitment to it was one of the best I've ever seen. She came in for someone who's like, you know, I didn't know much about TikTok and all that at the time. I'm learning it now, you know, but, you know, I knew what it was, of course, but like she was not on her phone at all. Phone was face down, dance shoes on all day and we were we were locked we were locked in and she also was interested in learning the fundamentals she's like no I really want to learn how to do the hips correctly or I I really want to learn like how to get my frame really in a good place so and sometimes that stuff's boring it is boring like when you hear that over and over again Um, but she was interested in those things and um, and we also just got along really well like I don't know what we've like brother and sister vibes, like she's so funny too, like when you get to know her, you know. Um, But I think um, it was her work ethic, man. Like we just really went the extra mile. And I was able as a choreographer to dig deeper. I was able to also, my strategy that season two was like, I just want to do the dances in their kind of natural essence. Because I, over the years, like you could see that lots of creativity had come into it, you know. And you would see, like, you know, side-by-side sections that are different from what the dance is. And um, and then after taking a break, I was like, oh, I really want to try and bring it back to the roots. Of course, do the creative stuff and have those fun moments. But she was really interested in that, and that um, that was a huge deal for me. She just really let me, like, go deeper and work on details, you know. What was the competition like between her and Heidi, her mom? Uh, they're, you know, their mom, their mom and daughter, and it was always fun and, and um, healthy and and great it was like there's you know it they're like oh mom and daughter it's like, they're still that's, that's her daughter Come yeah on. you know of course they're rooting for each other they love each other it's family you know her mom told me that charlie would pull her in and she'd be like you're going down bitch <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right yeah <laughs> when you had charlie how would you fill up your off time was were you still focused on- off time <laughs> is there really no off time no no there's no off time no not if you want to do it right None. Obsessed 100%. Uh, 200%. 200. 
Yeah. What was it like for you performing with Derek judging you now? Um, normal. It's funny. Like, I feel like, I think it's easier to, as someone who's not in the industry to be like, oh, there might be, you know, that must be weird dancing for your best friend or like, you know, I'll use Max and Val as an example. I know Max guest judged before or Julianne judged when Derek was on like, or like, let's imagine Lindsay Arnold judging for Riley or like, or dancing. There's, we know what it is. Like we've d- done this. There's like. Even if that, yeah, if that's your friend, you're doing them more of a service to tell them how it is. Right. Like, oh, this could have been better. You could have gone a bit further here, or this, that, and the other. I don't know. Like that's what we, that's what we do for each other. We want to help, not just like you know, sugarcoat it for you. Like I, I want the honesty. I want the feedback. And Derek has great feedback because he's done this a million times. So you know, if he gave us a note at the table, I'd be like, got it. You know. That'd be so cool to see you at the judges' table next we, to Derek again for a whole season. I'll give you – it's so funny. During – I can't remember whose dance it was, but we were pulling out an eight. And when I – the paddles are all numbered. And when I pulled it out, it was a six. He switched them in the commercial break. <laughs> was he messing with you? Oh, yeah. The whole time <laughs> kicking me under the table. I saw that. Yeah, I was like, get off. <laughs> like, like – um, Thank God I looked at it because I was literally about to be like six, <laughs> and I looked at him and he just he has this cheeky look on his face. He was like, and I was like, bro, you are not smooth. I see you over here. You know. Did you grow up with Julianne too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she she, she was you? my partner when we competed. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a photo of us dancing together when we were like ten and twelve. It's pretty funny. But yeah, when we were uh, juniors, we competed. Junior and youth, we competed together. So that's ten to sixteen. And then when you get to 16, you get into the youth. Yeah. What did you think of Julianne's dance this week? Killer. She had to remind everyone real quick. I love it. <laughs> I, was, I wrote that on her too. I was like, well, we just had to remind everyone real quick. Just so good. She's one of the, she's just one of the best. She yeah. just is. Yeah. She's just amazing. I felt it coming too. I was like, she's like, oh, I wish I could get out there. She's like, she's about to dance right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Is it crazy to see Alfonso go from contestant now to host for you? <laughs> um, not crazy at all. Like, um, when they announced him as host, I was like, yeah, he's great. I love, I have so much love for Alfonso. He's just a good guy and he cares and he's so talented at everything he does. Everything that he does is awesome. Incredible he, host. Incredible, incredible host. Um, and he goes the extra mile. Like he's at the dress rehearsals, he's at the camera blocks so that he has insight onto what you're going through that week. So he has great questions for you. He really cares for the competitors. He's just, you know, top notch. I love Alfonso. Is there anything specific about the show that you love the way that they operate? Now? Yeah. Um, like in what sense? Like For me, I thought it was so impressive that when they do the entire blocking day, the yeah. judges are not there. So they don't no. see yeah. the test run, which makes sense. But sure. I feel like on a lot of other shows, they might have to be there. No, yeah, yeah. They um, That's always been the way. They've never been in the dress rehearsal, you know. That's what makes it so cool to me as a fan that it's authentically real. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, <clears throat> even if they were so, – so, let's just say that you were in the camera block and the – because you have camera rehearsal, then you have band rehearsal and then and camera, and then you have dress rehearsal. There's three main rehearsals you have on the set, right? And even if the judges were there, every time it's different. You could have a con- consistent run. It's very rare. Like I've had – catastrophic dress rehearsals and great shows i've had great dress rehearsals and the show's been a bit like Bleh. you know i've had camera blocks that you're like oh yeah and then it just doesn't really come together on the night so that's what i will say about guest judging is like it's in the moment because if you're watching the dress rehearsal or something like that and in your head you're like oh it's probably let's say it's a nine you know or it's an eight and then within those two hours between dress, they, like, really get it together. And they, like, tighten up some of the things. Or let's say it's a 10 and then there's a big mistake. You know, you have to be able to see that and call it right there. You have to see it for what it is, you know. And that's that's um, that's a responsibility for the judges, you know. Right. You said sometimes things are just electric. Yeah. So for me, when I'm editing a video together, you can just tell, like, this is the take, this is the moment, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I can't describe it, but yeah. I just know that's what it is. That's For how sure. the audience will react. If you were to take like two dances, is there a way for you to explain why one dance is electric and it works and one doesn't? 
Wh- on the same couple or on separate couples? On the same couple. Um, like on a two show night, like why? Like maybe they'll have one that's fire and the other one that's not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could just be the style. Some styles can suit you better than others. It just it is what it is, and that's what makes the show interesting. That even if you're doing, let's just say all the Latin dances right now, cha cha, samba, rumba, pasa doble, and jive, they're all so different. The action, the only two that are somewhat similar is cha cha and rumba, because it's the same timing, it's the same break, but there's just the rumba is two, three, four, and one, and the cha cha is two, three, four, and one. You know what I'm saying? And you add the cha 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 in the middle. It's got a little bit more mm on it, right? And the rum is more romantic and subtle and this, that, and the other. But the jive is like you're at ten the whole time. Pasa doble is more oval and like a darker and aggressive dance. You know what I mean? And then the samba has a, the samba's a death sentence for everyone. It's the hardest one. Why? Because it bounces and it's very, um, it's awkward. It's hard. It's really hard to get that right. So when you can, when you see a celebrity get out there and they have the bounce you're like it's very very difficult so it doesn't matter if like oh you're really good at the latin or you're really good at the ballroom they're all different like different that's what makes it interesting you know what i mean it's not like you're doing a hip-hop dance or a you know styles that are similar like each one has its own um syllabus you know do you have any predictions for who you think will win this season Man, when they pu- pu- pulled the five couple final, I was like, "Wow, it just got harder now." So, uh, <laughs> what about you? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. If you I, had to call it now, what would you say? I love everybody. Everyone's killing it. Yeah. I think Brandon and Chandler, like you said, have that electric, and I think very good. Yeah. Joey and Jenna have the electric, but Riley and Steven, Every time I see them too, when I saw them do that first dance, yeah, I looked over to my wife. I'm like tens. And then they're like eights. I'm like, whoa. Wait, the very first dance? <laughs> yeah. I think One they got You eights, said right? tens? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I that was it. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, call it out to even like, oh, have they I ever given? That. Have they ever given tens week one? I don't know. I know they've given nines week one. In the first week? Yeah, first oh. week. I've only, I don't think they've ever pulled a ten. No, because I think Gene Simmons was the first one that did the ten. And then I learned all the lore of like, no, you can't give a ten that early in the season. You have to let people grow. Sure. I'm sure. learning. I'm learning. Yeah, I'm learning. yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Because it, it's true, right? Think about that. Like, if you have a, um, if you have a partner who's, it's not as natural, or it's more, it's more difficult, or hard time remembering when you're out there, or the adrenaline gets the better of you, right? Like if you score high, like early, like there's a reason there's one, two, three, four, five paddles. Like in the UK, the strictly come dance, and they're pulling out twos, threes, like yeah, you know, back in the day. You could literally look look up Len, Bruno, and Carrie Ann scoring like ugh, Master P, I think, twos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, Len was, he wasn't about, he was letting you know what time it was all the time. And that's why I love him. It's just like, and also Len's not on social, so he, do, he doesn't care. <laughs> he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't care. He's, He's living in his own land happy. No, like, literally, I miss that man so much. I'm, I knew Len before I was born. Like, my mom took lessons from Len, so, like, I was in her belly when she would have lessons with Len. Do you, you have a trip? favorite, do you have a favorite Len Goodman moment? There's too many to count. But one of my favorites is... There's a clip. It's I think it's Derek. It's it is Derek. It's Derek <laughs> breaking rule. Me and Derek were always breaking rules. Oh, it's so funny. Um, it was Derek and Kelly Pickler. I think it was their trio. And Len wasn't. He wasn't having it. He was like, oh, "I wanted to pass a job like Derek." And like, like just went. And then him and then Len and Bruno got into it. I remember we were all backstage like this. You know that Michael Jackson meme with the popcorns? Yeah, yeah. That was me back there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but he was he was just great because he lived this his whole life, you know. Um, but yeah, again, what I was saying, if you score too early, then someone, yes, it's great to get tens. It feels great, you know. But the reality is, it doesn't matter who you are. Well, you could be the most natural dancer, the best. We're all like, I've been doing this my whole life. It can always be better. We can always improve. We're always learning. Students of the game forever, right? You know, that's kind of how I see it. And it's like if you get that early in the, in the early four weeks, there might be a contestant where, yo, the eight, that's your ten. You know what I mean? So if you pull that early and you don't and then you can't get past that, that's a bummer. You know what I mean? Like I've had partners where it was like the eight was like, yo, the eight, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I've been there. I get it. So I think 
we got to get a little more comfortable with some of the lower paddles. Even though it's not fun, I understand. And you're rooting for your favorite person, but they're there for a reason. I think it's all about the balance. Of course. It is absolutely about the balance. And the whole yeah. show, too, is about progression. It is. I mean, I remember, um, man, it was like, what season was it? I can't remember. This. They, they, they all bleed into one. But I had a, my, one, one of my partners, name was Chelsea Kane. We did a jive to a Panic at the Disco song. And this was before we started getting like creative with sets. Like now we have these lavish sets and they have builds and you could have extra. Like went back in the day, like you couldn't even have a chair. It was like if someone got a chair, you'd be like, you got a chair in your dance? It was like, yeah, I got a chair. You know, like we didn't have that. How'd back. you pull that off, man? Yeah, like how'd you get the chair? You know, you could, you didn't have any of that. It's, it, it's evolved so much. And we did this jive routine where I had these two doors, and they opened up, and we like came out, and it was this whole like panic at the disco thing. And it was a pretty out of the box jive, and I, that was the one time I got nominated for an Emmy with choreography. And oh, with that panic song. With the panic at the disco song. Wow. That was the, one of the dances that got me the Emmy nomination, and Len and Carrie Ann gave me a five and a six. But you still got the Emmy nom. But, yeah. Perspective. But but, but it was at, it, there was some I there was some stuff in there that wasn't straight jive. I still like if you look at the legs, if you look at the legs and the feet, it's jive. If you looked up top, I was styling it differently. Like I wasn't going like hand and you know like jive hands. It was I was doing more. I don't know like panicky. Is, no, just like more contemporary or like some hip hoppy jazz, whatever you want to call it. Styling with the arms that wasn't so traditional jive. And at the time, we weren't doing all that back then. So you know, um, Len let me know what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is great. You know, that's part. Of, now it's evolved a lot more. We're allowed to take those risks and. You know, that's the cool thing is that the show evolves. Like, it changes. Like, I look up, I look back at the routines I was dancing before the show. Like, as a kid competitor, it's like the choreographic game. And, the, and it's just, it all evolves. It's like anything. It's like anything. You know, it's like sports as well. Like, you look back at, you know, I look back at the Premier League um, jerseys that, you know, the soccer players would wear. And they were all baggy and big, and now they're all like slim fitted, and like things evolve, you know. Even the NBA, it's yeah, it used to different. be the dunking. Yep. You needed a big center. Now it's a three point game. Yeah, and you look at the NFL uniforms from back in the day. Now it's like things evolve, and back then, you know, we weren't, we didn't have sets. We weren't doing cr- like out of the box stuff. They would, they wanted jives, and they wanted a jive, you know. So it's different now. If the producers look to you to see about casting for next season. Is there anyone you think that would be great on the show? As a contestant? As a yes, as a contestant. As the celebs. Ooh. Uh, wow. Jenna Johnson said uh Jason Kelsey, which I thought would be phenomenal. That would be cool. That would be very cool. He'd be great actually, right? So good. He's retired Maybe now. Maybe one of the slipknot guys. Have you ever danced with the uh a heavy metal song? I so the heaviest song. <laughs> Every week I pitch it, but they never take when it. When they when they said they were doing metal night, I was like Oh my gosh, I'm missing my moment. Like I would have like to do a pasta doble to like um Down with the Sickness by Disturbed would just be so fire. <laughs> but then I know it's hair metal night, so it's like eighties metal night, you know. But um I would love the heaviest song I danced to was uh, Our Time is Running Out by Muse. Okay. And then the the other rock song, like rock rock song, I and I got the master too, was Blur song too. I did that with Charlie. We did tango to that. When you get the master, that's when you can use the real that's version. That's when you use the actual recording. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you reach out to the artists themselves? I'm not sure the whole system. I know there's like from being in the record business as well and stuff, there's a whole there's publishing, there's masters, it's all gotta come together. You know, however, but the band kills it. Like one my one of my best friends is uh one of the lead singers in the band, Travis Garland. And he Every time he sings, I'm just like, wow. He sang, um, he sang all of Charlie and I's songs for the most part. When he sang "Glimpse of Us" for us, when he did the Joji song when we did our Venus Waltz, like, mm, I still when I watch that back, like, I really believe that that dance is top three for me. Oh out wow! Of, out of all of them, it's one of my favorites I've ever done. It was very sentimental meaning to me that particular dance and that week. And it just all came together and getting to do a really traditional barroom dance for Len as well. And then one of my best friends singing it so beautifully. Like it was, um, 
all the elements came together that week. You know, I was in a tail suit. She had a beautiful traditional gown on. It was just like, it's all the stuff coming together in the right time. And that's what the show's about, right? That's when you get fire, when you get what we were talking about, that like lightning in a bottle. It's when it's all the elements. It's the song. It's the wardrobe. It's the amount of time you've put into rehearsal. It's the connection and the breath and the staying grounded with your partner. And it all just happening in the right moment, you know. Are there any dances from this past week that you think were lightning in a bottle? I really liked um, Chandler and Brandon's Foxtrot, you know, to the Hosier song, Too Sweet. Yes. Is that it? Travis sang that one, too. Um, that one was really quite cool, you know. I know she got she got hit for the... The foot? Foot coming off the floor, but yeah, it happens. I've been, I've been, oh, so many times I've been hit for the foot coming off the floor, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to see the finale. Like, what, because cause you're building to this, right? You can have lightning in a bottle in week two, week three, week four. If you can have it more than once, great. But it's all leading to this. This is the night, you know what I mean? I always think, like, semifinals when you have one Latin, one ballroom, and then you go into your freestyle round. Like, if you can make all three of those hits or, like, have, like, really rehearse them to the point where you don't have to think, that can, like, really set you up well. But, you know, I've seen it all happen on the show. Nothing surprises me. Like, when people go, are you surprised? I'm like, no. <laughs> I've seen it all. Like, aren't you surprised so-and-so got eliminated? No, I'm not. So I've seen it all, you know. You never know. You never know, dude, you know. Where do you have your mirror ball trophies? So right now they are um, they're in my wife and I's um, dining room on the side, like all three of them together in numerical order. Um, <laughs> have they been the same exact since? What, like? Tro the exact same trophies? No, they're all three of mine are different. So my first one with um, Christy is a little shorter, and it had the vintage logo on it. I don't know if you remember the, like, cursive logo. Um, it's so funny too how like vintage is like back just in every sense from clothing to records to because when they introduced a new logo I was like oh I wish mine had the new logo <laughs> on it you know and then but now I'm like oh I love that the vintage logo's on it right and then Sean's was taller a little bit taller but similar build different different um, font on the plaque Christie's had like cursive fonts is more like type and then Charlie's is a whole new design like the, like I won with Char Charlie in season thirty-one. The last time I won was season eight. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was a long time. You know, long time. Got close, but no scar. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get anything for second place, right? No. no. <laughs> Great memories that last a lifetime for sure. Do you have a favorite choreography out of all of your years that you did? Like uh, as a as a pro? Yes. Oh. Um... Yeah, the Venus also Charlie was, that's like, and her freestyle. I love that one. And her pasta. You know what it was? With Charlie, there was a switch for me with her. She was always good, and she worked hard. She really worked hard for it. This was not, we, we like put in the hours. Everybody's working hard. Everybody. Um, there was a switch after the contemporary dance. I don't know if you saw that one where I would, it was a kind of based on anxiety and I was like in this black thing and we did this crazy lift off the ground, whatever. After that one, there was a, I felt a switch in just everything from the rehearsals to the performances. You know, we'd gotten to know each other at this point um, and all her dances after that one were some of my favorites like I loved doing the tango to blur song too and then uh her um what was the other one I loved the Vini's waltz the pasta doble I played guitar in the beginning of that one too which was cool a lot of people didn't realize that that's me playing at the beginning like and they went around and she had like this solo moment which I love like watching her do that moment was like it was, cause it was hard for her to like you know you know Charlie is of quite she's she's sweet and she's you know so we worked very hard on getting that like impact out of her. So when I watch that bag, it makes me very proud. Um, and then uh, her freestyle, I, I just loved that one. I loved it because it was simple. I loved it that it was just the two of us. And you know, we had talked at length because I wasn't sure about doing the season because I'd kind of fallen out of love with doing it, and I'd done it a lot, and I'd moved on to other things. And and I think Charlie had felt a little bit 
of that as well because you know when she got into the tiktok thing it was for fun and stuff like that you know with a big platform comes a lot of noise and things like that and she had felt those feelings before too so we had r open discussions about that and i said well that's what our final dance is it should be about two people coming together and just dancing like no one's watching because they genuinely enjoy doing it and um and falling falling back in love with the art of dancing and that's that's all i wanted was that at the end. I didn't want bells and whistles and sets and a load of other dancers to watch. You know, I wanted it to be about us. So that was one of my um that was one of my favorite ones as well. And I love the music. It was beautiful, you know. Hearing you talk about all of this is so inspiring. Thanks, you, man. You have your passion, you found it, you love it, you breathe it. And you're yeah. doing all these other things too and you're incorporating them into it. Of course, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think coming back with um and doing that season, you know, with Charlie was like a really great experience for that reason. You know, um, I was able to do my thing. I was able to go extra mile with the choreography and the detail, not because she's danced before, not because of what it was because she cared about learning those things. And she let me do the thing, you know, and um, we had a blast together, you know, we had a lot of fun together. And now she's on Broadway, which is killer. Juliet or what is she? Yeah, doing? And Juliet. Yeah. So she's made her Broadway debut. Um about a month ago. So I'm, I'm going to try and get out there. My wife and I want to go see her um, over the holidays at some point. So so what do you, you said you love Broadway is how you can really fully immerse yourself inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when, well, when you're, when I, um, I did Jersey Boys in 2000, when was it? 2016, 2017. So. And you were Frankie Valley. I was Frankie. Yeah, I played Frankie in that. Um, and I was the last guy to do it on Broadway because it closed um, at the end of my run. And um, yeah. I was a, they split it from doing eight shows a week to six and two. So I was the six show Frankie, you know? Um, and yeah, like literally that's all I was doing. Like wouldn't talk for hours. You had very strict vocal regime, swam 50 laps in the pool and steam room, jogged to the theater to warm up. For your vocals? Yeah. Like, like to break, a, for me to break a sweat and really get there. And then, you know, 20 minute, 25 minute vocal warm up, do the show vocal warm down and then it's we're done we're done for the day no more talking really mm -hmm. not until like two the next day and that's when you start your warm-ups again uh -huh. yeah every day so i did it for i think it was four months and then i did it in la at the amazon for about two months four months in new york two months in la and then i did it at the muni in st louis which was just eight shows straight um in a one week in one week yeah so yeah, it's 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 a whole different discipline, you know. It's such an intense art. It is, and it's funny because it was a full circle moment for me. And my wife actually found this article. She's like, "I want to show you this," and this article was from when I just moved out here to do Dancing with Stars. And they were like, "What are some of your bucket bucket list items to do?" And one of them was to play Frankie Valli on Broadway. And ten years later, I got to do it. Wow! So and it had always been one of my favorite musicals because my uh, granddad loved the four seasons you know so and you don't realize how many songs until you're at the show you're like wait this is them too it's like begging sherry big girls don't cry can't take my eyes off you my eyes adore. it's like hit 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 after hit you know and it's um i wish he had been alive to see it you know but um it was uh yeah it was one of the greatest moments of my life doing that show how'd you find your way into kinky boots so um for kinky boots uh they were holding auditions, and I sent in a tape to the team, and then I um, flew out to New York, and I, you know, did a whole round of auditions with Jerry Mitchell and the team. It was an amazing experience, and um, yeah, just uh, was lucky enough to get the gig, you know. But I did all the auditions. You had the vocal call, the dance call, the acting call, and they kind of spread it out throughout the day. Vocal call, as in vocal call. So you're um, singing the songs. There's two big songs uh. for Charlie Price, which is Step One and Soul of Man. And they're, they're, you know, they're big. And you got to keep in mind, like, you sing the song, but you're doing scenes right before where you're talking and you're yelling and it's an emotional. And then you got to sing the song. You know what I mean? Same thing in Jersey Boys. It was like you would have this really intense scene and then you got to go into the song, you know. So you have to pace yourself, like, very um, strategically. And there's a lot of dialogue. A lot. A lot of dialogue. Jersey Boys act to it and leave the stage. Like, you're there the whole time. Is that just natural for you that you can remember all that? 
I'm pretty good. Like, like I'm a. I like to over rehearse. Like any of my partners would tell Charlie will tell you that. Like I, I like we. Again, again. If they're up for it, like we're gonna, like, during Dancing with the Stars, think about this. You have your dress rehearsal. Or your camera block that morning, and then everyone's kind of hanging out. But next door is the the stage where they shoot American Idol, and there's a whole space right there. I'm rehearsing over there all day. Oh, you're Kobe Bryant. All day. That's just I, I liked it. like even with Derek this week when we did the tango, he flew in that morning from his show. We camera blocked. We went and had lunch, got ready, whatever, and then. I'd say two hours before the show, we were running it over on that stage. So when we walked on the floor, we were already... Are you going 100% when you're practicing it? Um, I would say you're sitting at about 70. Maybe like maybe a full pass. But for the mo- it's more just to break a sweat. Like for me, like whether it's Dancing with the Stars, playing shows with my wife, being on a Broadway show, I like to be sweating before I... I gotta be hot. I hate going in cold. I just can't do it. Gotta be like, you know few run-throughs because I always feel like you're once you've had like four under your belt then you're feeling loose you know it's good when you're doing your vocal warm-ups for Broadway do you ever really miss notes or are you pretty always locked when on? I'm warming up uh when after your warm-up sorry like when during the actual performances I mean I th- I think I was you know pretty consistent the things happen you know things like you drink water weird you didn't breathe hard enough you know you you went too hard in the acting scene and you're like oh you know like that's natural but that's the gig it's learning your your pace, when to breathe, when not to breathe, when to take that sip of water, you know, like when not to. Like one time in Jersey Boys, I um, forgot to go to the restroom in the intermission because I was bullshitting backstage with the cast, and then I didn't leave the stage. So halfway through, I was like, oh, my God, I have to pee really, 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 really bad. So for like 20 minutes to the end of the show, I was just like, I'm dying. <laughs> I made it. I made it. But, yeah, you learn these things like – from every detail, when you're sipping your water, when you're drinking your tea, when you got to breathe through it, you know, not to take <gasps> breaths that dry you out. Like that right there, dry you out. You're screwed. Like if you <gasps> in between, you know, and doing big numbers in kinky boots, like um, everybody say, yeah, where well, you're on the treadmill. Have you seen it? No. Okay. So there's, so the end of act one, there's this show called it. There's this uh, number called everybody say, yeah. And it's all the belts in the shoe factory and they're treadmills. Like, they're legit moving treadmills, and they move the whole time. You're sliding off one treadmill, jumping to the other, coming down, singing a line, throwing the boot, catching the boot, front flip over the treadmill, running back around, jumping on it, sliding all the way down, you know. And it's like, you got you to gotta know when you're breathing, when you're not. Pace yourself, otherwise you'll gas out, you know. But, however, competing ballroom in Latin uh, for a long time has given me a good uh, cardio tank, thank God. So, right. Yeah. Is there any plays that you want to do? Yeah. I mean, it's been a minute since I've done Broadway, but, like, yeah, I would love to get back out there at some point. Jesus Christ Superstar has always been my, on my... The goal? One of the goals, like, on a big stage. I did it in a, on a small stage in the UK when I was younger, but to play Judas in that would be really, really cool, you know? Hades Town would be cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else right now that would be... Um, I'd love to be in Hamilton. I'd love to play Hamilton. That'd be really fun. Um, or be in something new, you know, I'd, I'd love that opportunity as well. We'll see, you know, you do so much. I just like to keep it moving, man. You know, like I, I love music. I love dancing. I love theater. I love, um, bringing people joy and hopefully, you know, bringing some entertainment and something to people that they can like escape life. And, and that, that I live for that. I love that. Is all making sense to me now that why you and Derek our friends oh yeah yeah we're very intense in different ways yeah because when, <laughs> I, when i first met him he showed me videos of him like scuba diving oh yeah he's like cutting it together and then he's singing on stage with breaking benjamin yeah and then he's doing dance with his, i'm like what do you, you not do you have to, to after this go on his instagram and look at his get ready with me for his before like he shows you his 24 hour from the tour from his tour to judging the show it's it's wild but that's that was our lives we were we were busy we were we were doing stuff all the time when we were kids, you know. We were theater school all day, guitar lessons, band lessons, singing lessons, ballroom lessons. Like we're just always doing stuff. And your parents were just always taking you left and right there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were very supportive and like, oh, you're into rock music. Let's get you a lesson in that. Or you like to 
play guitar. Let well, because my dad played guitar great when he was younger. So he would, um, you know, he had me in the flamenco stuff first. Which when I was young, I was like, I want to play Nirvana, you know. But now, I'm so grateful that I learned those fundamentals because I incorporate them in my playing style, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, they were just always like, you know, happy if for us to be like pursuing things we were genuinely passionate about, you know. What's your favorite live show you ever seen? Concert, <sighs> rock band. Slipknot. Really? I mean, I've seen, you know. The 1500 I've, cap run? That one was very special, but I've seen them a few. I saw them in 99 at Brixton Academy. <laughs> at Woodstock? Okay. I saw them at OzFest in 2001. I've seen them at the Forum. I've seen them at the Intuit Dome. I've seen them at Madison Square Gardens. I've seen them a few times. Like, I'm a maggot for, for life. You know, I've got, when um, my wife surprised me with the tickets to the Intuit Dome, which she got through Kelly Osborne, because Kelly's married to Sid, who's the DJ in Slipknot. Um, so, and Kelly hooked it up. Like we had passes. Like I was like a child, literally. Were like, you backstage with them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like you know, like giving them space because I know what that's like. So you're performing. Like I was just kind of. We were just back there, you know. Um, and we had great seats. Like I have a vlog I made. I'll show. I haven't posted it yet, but I'll, I'll show you. It's fun. Yeah. But um, and they just played. Um, they didn't play any music that had been, uh, released after '99, and I knew every word to every song. It was the best. What's the, your favorite song from that album? I mean, I'll take it in order. Like sick, eyeless, surfacing, spit it out, tattered and torn. Like purity, liberate. When liberate comes on, that was that's my like hype song before I uh. You know, have to dance or something. I love that song. The fact they have so many members is so insane. It's so good. They're so good. Yeah, like I just remember as a kid, that record, that self titled record, like really helped me a lot when I was a teenager, you know. Who uh, else? Corn. Saw Corn a couple times. They were really great. Corn was one of my favorite bands. I remember we were, uh, when we were kids, um, it, we were in the, it was with Derek. We were in the car with his older sister, and she had Corn on in the car. And I was like, yo. What is that? Oh, I that need, was your first I, discovery. I need that. Yeah, and it was um, their first album, the song "Blind," just the first song on the first album, and it was like, and I was like, "What's that?" So yeah, I love them. God, man, we've been to so many concerts over the years. I'm trying to think. Do you like the newer stuff, like "Day to Remember," "Story So Far"? I'm not so much into the newer stuff. Like, I wouldn't say like. Who is it? Sleep Token. I was. I've heard some of their stuff's pretty cool. Dream Theater. Dream Theater. Yep, yeah, I like some of that. Um, but but yeah, I'm definitely like a, that era, like System of a Down, The Used, you know, uh, My Chemical Romance. But I love classic rock too. Like Queen is one of my favorite bands of all time, of all time. My wife and I bonded heavy over Queen. You know, like we we just put Queen on and we're like, <laughs> ACDC, like. That rhythm section in ACDC is just so nasty. You did know? you see The Dirt, the Motley Crue movie? I, I did. I think I did. Yeah, yeah. It's been, I thought it was so good. Yeah, yeah. It's Machine Guns in it, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I it's enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. It, um, but yeah, I, I, all of it, man. But like also the older stuff too. Like my dad loved uh, Michael Jackson and Prince and Parliaments of Funk, Earth, Wind and Fire. Like we listened to my record collection is, I got all of it from Slipknot, you know, Bands like Cannibal Corpse or Cattle Decaf, like heavy, heavy stuff to like, you know, Johnny Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> you Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. <laughs> love Cindy. Like Cindy wrote Kinky Boots, you know? So, um, yeah, like I, I just I just love music. If it hits me, I'm in, you know? But yeah, metal was a big uh, thing for me growing up. I loved it. So when you heard your wife singing for the first time. Yeah. And you realized she was a musician. Yeah. Was that kind of like it all just made sense? Well, yeah. I mean, I um, it's funny. Travis, who's in the band, I was telling you about at Dancing with the Stars. He had a gig, and he hit me up. He was like, "Yo, I need a guitar player for this gig. Can you do it?" I was like, "Sure." He's like, "When is it?" He's like, "It's in three hours." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so I had to learn his material. We went and played this gig, and then after the gig, the guy that was hosting it was like, "Hey, we do these every week. If you ever want to come back and do your own set," I was like, "Would love to. I'll be here next week." So the next week I came back and it was like, it's kind of like um, a concert at the house and they had GoPros and they would stream it online. It was for a good cause, you know. So it was lots of great musicians there. Like Gavin DeGraw was playing there, you know, like loads of people were playing there, you know. Um, so 
I came, and when I got there, it had grown over the in size, and it was packed. Like, like I couldn't see her on stage; I could only hear her. And when your she, wife singing, yes, when when my wife was singing, and the room was like quiet, which is rare in L.A. Like, usually people are on their phone; they don't give a fuck about you. They're like talking. You're like up there burying your soul, and people are talking. You know, L.A. is a tough room. It's tough, you know. But this room was like. They were in, and I, and I remember I had my buddy with me. Um, actually, it was my cousin. My cousin Sal was with me, and I was like, "Yo, whoever that is, is that's legit. That's like all the, I like raspy. I love raspy, smooth, sultry, whiskey sounding voices. That's I just I love that sound, and that's the type of voice she has. So then, you know, I'm listening to her for 15 minutes around the corner, you know, because I can't get in there. It's so packed. And then when she was finished, I was up next. So then everyone grabs a drink, next artist sets up. So I'm in there, I'm setting up my uh, guitar and she's you know, tearing down and I was like, no way that voice came, could, no way that that huge voice came out of this cute girl, you know? And um, I didn't speak to her or anything. I was just like, oh, you know? And then when I played my set, she was sat in the front, like she was sat, so I was like. You give, were turning it up? I was giving it a bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving it a little extra stuff, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, I was, you know, being a ham as usual. Um, so afterwards, I, um, you know, I went and spoke to her. I was like, hey, well, great set. Would love to, you know, hang out sometime or whatever, you know. And she was like, oh, yeah, we, you, I loved your guitar playing. We should, like, maybe write together, like, giving me the business, you know. And I was like, oh, I was thinking, like, maybe see a movie. <laughs> and um, then we exchanged numbers. And, uh, you know, she definitely kept me on ice for a minute. And then, uh, you know. Here we are. And then Tuesday came Married, around. Married, baby. Taco know. Tuesday came Taco around. Taco Tuesday. That's right. You do your research. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I wrote, like, I hadn't heard back from her in a while. And then um, eventually she's like, hey, sorry, it's been crazy. Because she was so busy at the time. We both were, you know. And um, she was like, I'm free on Tuesday if you want to go for tacos or something. Taco Tuesday. And I was like, sure, let's do it. She was like, I'll drive myself. Can only stay an hour. You don't have to pick me up. I was Ooh, like, she has the out already. I was like, all right, all right, cool. And then we went to Taco Tuesday at this little spot. Um, I think it's called El Carmen on Third Street. Like, have you been there? No. Oh, dude, you should go. In Santa Monica? No, on Third Street, like oh. by the Grove, like d right down that area. It's like good little hole in the wall, like secret spot. Great margaritas, great tacos. Okay. Um, so we went there, and about an hour in, but two hours in, I'm like, don't you have to go? She's like, no, no, I just wanted an out. <laughs> I was like, I like you. You're cool. you you give it straight. I love that. So now here we are, you know. And yeah. you guys have a band together. Yes, we have a band together. We're called Alexander Jean. So it's our middle names. My middle name's Alexander. Her middle name's Jean. So that's how we kind of came up with that. When we were, um, we started the band in 2015, um, which is crazy. It's almost been 10 years, you know. Um, but yeah, we were going somewhere, and our the way our plane tickets landed, it said... Alexander Jean and I, I got it tattooed on my knuckles as well oh, wow. but it, it uh and that's how we we got the name yeah wow yeah. and she wrote Beyonce's song yeah she wrote if I were a boy yes she's your the, wife wrote if I were a boy yes she did yeah how does that happen man you should have her on <laughs> and talk about it you know she's got a so it's, it's a it's a wild story but you know just inspiration I think you know in cliff note she was in New York uh, with the, her co-writer um, that she wrote the song with. And um, they were just having open conversation like we are now. One thing led to another where she was just like, oh, I wish I was, wish I could be a boy and, you know, eat pizza and wear this and do that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, there's a song there. And then they went and wrote it in like, I think a couple of hours. Wow. Yeah. So she, you should uh, talk to her about it. Like she tells it. It's an amazing story. Oh, I love that. And it's a great song. It's a great song. And like, when you hear her do it, it's like, wow, it's, it hurts. It hurts. It makes you, it's, it's always the case, right? You hear, of course, Beyonce's version is amazing, and there's been many covers of it over the year. I think, like, George Michael's done it. Um, Reba McIntyre did it. A couple others, I think. Um, it's so cool to hear other versions of something that you've written or, you know, whatever it is, whatever the piece of art is. But when I hear her sing it, I'm like, oof, I see you, you know. How often are you guys working on music now? So when we, we our baby just turned one, which Congrats. is a trip. Like I blinked and he's now like crawling so fast everywhere. Um, I know. He said what's up to me outside. I, like, I know, right? He's like, what's up, bro? Uh, he, um, <laughs> We're doing the pop? Yeah. <laughs> you just get a lot of, ah. <laughs> but he, um, 
we made it a conscious decision to be home for the first year. I, we took a break off social media pretty much. Like, was just being home and, and in it with him. We really wanted that, you know, because we, um, you know, we had a rough go with the first time that she got pregnant and stuff like that. So when this, um, when he came, we were just like, oh, like, let's just be, let's just be here, you know, and we have a home studio. So that whole time for this first year, we've been writing and recording and we have a lot of material on the hard drive a lot so we um just have to now like go in and be like i like that don't like that like that don't like that let's finish these five or ten and maybe there'll be an ep or an album at some point next year yeah and then would you want to tour off that too yeah i would love to yeah because we haven't toured in a while because COVID had happened, and um, we had booked a couple of tours, and then there was, like, another wave, and then we had to cancel. And, you know, putting touring – the touring market today, it's, it's, it's tough to do, you know, and it's um, – and then by the time that it had opened up, we wanted to write new music, and we were trying for a family. So timing just wasn't on the cards for us right after the pandemic. Um, so now we have a lot of new material that we're – genuinely like listening to and be like oh i love these songs i love these songs you know so um yeah and then also but now we're parents too so it's like we have to find a, a way of being able to go play those shows and um have our son with us and do all that but after uh, the finale because i have my performance with derek and then it's the holidays so then i think we're gonna have some more time to like we took a step away because you, you know it's like you create you're creating all the time, video and editing. And you know how sometimes you'll be in something and then you'll take a break and then you come back and you see it fresh again and you're like, I love this or I got to change this. You know, so we want to do that um, once we get through the finale of the show in a couple of weeks. It's our anniversary too coming up. So then we'll, we're going to listen back and just see where we're at, you know. How are you going to celebrate the anniversary? Have you thought about it? Yep, I've got a reservation plan, taking her to dinner. So, Ooh. you know, we got a babysitter, like, okay. you know, because that's the, that's the get down. That's now. what we do you now. Know, that's what we do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to go out for our, our anniversary. And then the next day it's finale. So, yeah, I'll be there watching and dancing with Derek. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Can we fire through some fan questions? Let's do it. Would he ever consider being a judge on the show permanently? Uh, I would consider it. Yes, I would consider it. Possibility. Possibility. Yes. A pos pos possibility. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was just so much positive feedback about you being constructive, yet positive, and it was so easy to follow for the audience. That was like the biggest reception of you being a judge, which I thought really did translate for people who have watched the show and haven't watched the show. Yeah. So that's why, as a fan, I appreciated you being there. For sure. Thank you. You have to ask him about 2B1G. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's the band that he had with Derek and Julianne. I know what up. it is. <laughs> <laughs> so when, you know, I have a clip I can show you after this. You, you, it is, oh, I saw it the other day and I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's great though. It's just so. It's just us, you know. So it was our little. Um, we had a little uh, like a pop group, I guess, you know. And it was. It's so funny because, I'm like, I'm probably thirteen. Derek's fourteen. Julianne's like eleven or twelve, whatever. And I'm just so into Slipknot and Corn and Nirvana and Green Day and like, I'm in this like. And I'm just, you, I've got like bracelets and black nails. Like Everything I'm, from Hot I'm Topic. I'm just like in it. Hot Topic. That was like, because we didn't have that in England. So whenever we would come to America and we'd see Hot Topic, I'd be like, oh, my God. We just didn't have that in England. Uh, our equivalent is, like, going to Camden Town and, like, finding some pieces, you know. But, yeah, it was our little uh, pop group we had that was um, quite hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the, did you ever no, – did you ask him about his parents being mentioned on Gilmore Girls? Yes. I, I, I noticed that. I've been – it's funny because I can tell that – when they show the clip, the dancers are dancing international ballroom, which means waltz, tango, foxtrot, quick step, Venus waltz, right? But my parents are international Latin dancers. They do cha cha samba, rumba, pasa doble, and jive. So I can tell whoever was writing the script was probably like, let's just find like the biggest names in the ballroom world, and they just picked my parents because <laughs> they don't. They they don't. My mom's done ballroom, of course, but, but not like, that. They were s specialists in the Latin American style. Uh, so it, that's a little tidbit. If you watch the episode back, you'll notice on the screen that it's ballroom that's happening, not Latin. So fun little fact there. <laughs> 
I've always wondered if he ever considered joining Strictly Come Dancing since he grew up in England. Uh, at the time, no, I hadn't considered it. Like, I honestly hadn't considered, you know, a um. Like, if you had asked me when I was nineteen or twenty, like, oh, do you? Th- I would have never called this ever, you know. Um, so yeah, no, I hadn't. Um, I was aware of the show, you know, but like, I just wasn't too familiar with any of it until I did Dancing with the Stars. But now my mom is the head judge on Strictly. So she essentially took over for Len when he, um, you know, stepped down from head judge on Strictly. So, yeah, I don't know if that would work out now. <laughs> you know, did you ever consult with your mom before you judging? Um, I did. You know, it's interesting. I had done, man, like my my mom got on Strictly, I want to say in 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'd already done, you know, I think maybe 18 seasons of Dancing with the Stars. So. And she wasn't sure if she was, if she, well, I don't know. I was like, no, you should definitely, no one is more equipped for this than you. You eat, sleep, drink, Latin and ballroom dancing. You are perfect for this, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, very encouraging for her to do it. And, you know, she ended up acing the screen test, which I knew she would, because literally there's no one more knowledgeable than her about this. She loves it still, and still to this day will get out there and make some of us look like we're going backwards like she can still move you know so um yeah so then she got all the experience on being on strictly and then you know i watched some of her judging took notes watched some of land took notes watched the shows take notes you know and just trying to kind of find my own way forward right. with it you know earlier seasons of the show seem to focus more on traditional ballroom yes. what are your thoughts on the evolution as someone who's been part of the show for so long i'm conflicted i'll tell you why because in the beginning, as a 23-year-old, you know, 24-year-old, I was like, oh, I want to do more, and I want to be creative, and I, w- and I did. Like, like I'll use that Chelsea Kane jive example, you know, and I got reamed by the judges for it, right? Um, and then as, t- then as time went on, I felt like it just, w- like, there would be times I'd watch the show, and I'm like, what dance is happening? I don't know what dance is happening, literally. For me to be like, is this quick step or is it, well, what, what are we watching, you know? So then I feel like sometimes there, there's times where it can be too much. So am I for it? Yes. Do I also want to know what dance you're doing? 100%. So I feel like there, you have to find the balance and that takes time. I've, I've been there myself. I know Derek's been there where you sometimes you go a little too hard or do too much of that's not recognizable. And then you can also underserve yourself by not doing anything creative. However, when a ballroom dance or a Latin dance is done as intended with authenticity and it's done correctly, it's beautiful to watch. You know, it really is. Because there's nothing like, I don't care if you've danced your whole life or you've got jazz experience, you've got, you've seen it on So You Think You Can Dance, you see it. When people switch to ballroom, it's a different language, you know, and I, people say, oh, well, you know, they're like a professional dancer. I'm like, I know really bad professional dancers. I like, just because you've done this dancing of something doesn't mean that you're going to be ready for this. It's different. So I'm very conflicted because the rebel in me is like, yeah, let's do something creative and out of the box and do it. But then the purist in me is like, I really want to see the dance for how it's intended. So if you can find the right balance, you'll get a 10 from me. Right. <laughs> you know? Out of all your years. Yeah. Is there anyone's choreography? Everyone's been incredible. Of course. Yeah. Amazing. Is there, is there anyone's choreography that you really looked forward to to see how they put it together? Oh, Derek, yeah. Derek, yeah. Love watching Derek. He's great. He's just great. Have you seen... I've, you've seen his live tour now, right? Oh, yeah. I went and helped him a little bit just as a... I, went, I didn't help him with the choreography. I just was a third set of eyes for him to be like, is this working? Is this not working? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's just... He's brilliant. He's brilliant. That's but, so cool you guys grew up together. But there's so many. There Really, over the years, there have been... All the pros are fantastic. I love them all. We, I have great relationships with everybody, um, but, you know, we just, we grew up together. We have us, like, Val. I love watching Val, too. Like, I watch Val, and I'm just like, 
even that season when, when I was on with Charlie and he danced with Gabby and, you know, we were essentially at the end together. Like, I would go home and watch the show and I'd text him. I'd be like, you're so good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're so good. You know, like, like, but there's so, it's so many, you know, like, um, man, it's, 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 uh, it's a loaded question. I don't, you know, like I just, I, there's so many dances that I've enjoyed over the years, you know, many. How is dad life? It's the best. It's the best. I love it. Any aspects that you really enjoy? So I love the morning routine. Love that. Like I go get him in the morning. You know, we do the change the diaper, change the outfit, get him ready for the day. <laughs> um, you know, and then I, uh, I take him to mom and then I go make coffee for mom and I. I bring do some in. art. <laughs> yeah, just hang out, you know, and like and just cuddle time in the morning. And then he, now when I take him outside, he's like, like, yeah, I just like, I just love it. And now we're, um, he's into um, rolling balls. Like, so we have a little soccer ball or a football, as we would say in the UK, which my mom just got him a new one from the Liverpool Stadium, which will be great. But we roll the ball, and now he's like rolling the ball. I just, I just love it. Love it. He took five steps the other day, and I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's, it's honestly, I've been fortunate enough to do some really amazing things um, in my life, and and be on the show, and be on Broadway, and tour the country, and play music, and do all these different roles in entertainment. But this is my favorite. It's just like he's just, he's so cute. Yeah, I love him. What are you looking forward to in the future with him? Is there anything you really want to do? I want to do what he wants to do. Like, I'm so curious to see what he's going to be into. You know, it's, it's when BC was pregnant, um, he, he, we were always, oh, maybe he's a drummer in there. Cause like constant, like when there's music on rhythm, like rhythm was happening, you know, r towards the end. And like, so when he was really little, um, when we'd be working in the studio, sometimes he would sit with me in there whenever I was programming drums or, working on anything um, percussive or rhythmic, he he loves that. He loves it. And then he's got these toy maracas that he's just like, or like um, toy, he has a toy shaker. Like all my shakers that I use for percussion, he loves those. Like he's into that. But then um, we took him to one of Derek's rehearsals and he was watching the dancers and they had these like, um, shift, like fans that have chiffon fabric. So he was like really into that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to see what he's into, you know, like we took him, um, where do we take him? We took him to Disney the other day and like watching him, like, I just, it's great. It's great. Did you he meet Mickey? No. Not yet? No, not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he meet Mickey? He did. He tried to eat his nose. Mickey tried to eat his or? No, B Banksy tried to eat Mickey's, Mickey's nose. nose. <laughs> Mickey took a step back. <laughs> he was like all about it. So excited to see Mickey. Like it was. It was really sweet. Yeah. Does he go on rides? Did you bring him on rides? We went on the obviously the little little ones. Like he did really well on um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, loved it. Um, That's my favorite ride. It's my favorite ride. And the I, smell. So like yeah, the water. The, yeah, like I'm just sitting there. Like this, yeah, and I'm like looking at him, and he's like loving it. Yeah. So we did the little baby rides, you know, you know. But it's gonna be cool, like over the years, to like go on the bigger ride. I remember doing that with my dad, you know, like going to the theme park and being terrified to go on the ride that literally went like this. And then be like, no, come on, you're going to love this. And then we do it. And he'd be like, again, <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, I'm just, um, I'm excited for all of it. I'm just curious to see what he's going to be into, you know. Are you a foodie there? Am I? Yeah. My wife's a huge foodie. She would, t she makes fun of me. She says that I'm kids menu because I eat the same thing on repeat. Mac and cheese, chicken tenders. <laughs> no, well, not anymore. I'm much better now since we've been together. But like. I'm a creature of habit, as you can tell, like when I'm into something, like I'm into it. And that's just for all aspects of my life. So I'm like, ooh, I really like this wrap. I'm going to eat this for seven days now. <laughs> <laughs> have it nonstop. However, during um, during COVID and some of the, we, we would cook a lot together. My my wife's a really good cook. I'm, I'm getting into that with her as well. We do that together. But she has definitely helped me expand my palate and stuff like that. Because when you're competing, it's just like, oh, let's have a steak and rice or chicken and veggies and just like, you know, fuel. Right. Fuel food. Fuel the to, body. To keep it moving, you know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, getting a little bit more adventurous. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself starting your own dance series someday? Like, like televised? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I've never really thought about that. Um, I think it would depend on the context, you know, like, um, 
yeah, I don't know. Like, sure. I, I never say never to anything. Like, I like if if something came at the right time, and it was to showcase talent that deserved to be showcased, and that was up and coming, and that was exciting, and that the audience was excited about, and you know, I was able to work with people that I know lo and love well, and you know, then sure. I mean, yeah. I, d I don't know if it's like on my list at the moment, but if something um, showed itself and it was felt right, sure, yeah. I love finding new talent like this as well. Like seeing, again, like seeing Brandon and Riley, like I've known them since they were little, you know, so seeing like, seeing them just like, nice. That's so <laughs> cool to see. Like I remember, I remember that. I remember that feeling. I remember making my first final, you know. I remember getting the semifinal and be like, how am I going to make the final? You know, and like just watching them both, like I'm like, sick so yeah. do you think riley right right now training thinking about it oh yeah she's they're, they're in it all she's, of them all five of the couples are they're in it right now everybody's working hard everyone you know and it just at the end of the day you know i've seen how it goes on the show sometimes the best dancer wins sometimes they don't sometimes it's the most improved sometimes it's not sometimes it's a fan favorite or what it, it you you don't know so all you can do is watch it enjoy it for what it is and vote for your favorite you know so this has been such an honor talking to you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Thank you for making this your first podcast. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I was telling you, I've never done a sit down before. This is fun. I yeah. hope I delivered. You did. It was fun, man. Thank you. Cool. So, what else do you have coming up? Um, so, the f finale of Dancing with Derek. We're gonna do our uh, piece together, which I'm very excited about. And then um, after that, I'm kind of holiday mode you holiday dad mode oh uh holiday dad mode which is gonna be great i think we're gonna stay home here for the holidays i was hoping to get over to england to see my mom and stuff but i think i'm gonna go next year um and then we bc and i are going to be editing our album or ep Exciting. so be ready for that um and then just a couple other dance things here and there and you know uh, seeing what's up for 2025 so now it's just kind of Mood boarding for 2025, put is, it that way. Is there any, did you get your son any gifts for the holidays yet? Not yet. We, we, um, he's got some bits, like some clothes and stuff like that. But, um, you know, he, he, um, his interests are changing daily, of like which toys he wants to play with. Like cars are big right now. He has this car that you push the top and it goes. So he has like five of those and he's really, we're into balls and cars right now. So I kind of wanted to see like what he's really stoked on, like a couple Race weeks before drivers? Christmas. Yeah, and get, cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Although I think I'd be very nervous. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm curious to see what he's into in the next couple of weeks, and you know we'll probably get him a couple couple goodies. Exciting. Yeah, man. Cool. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks, man. Appreciate Guys, it. Guys, give this video a like. Uh, follow Mark everywhere on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and be on the lookout for the EP or album. Yeah. Cool. One cool. or the other. One or the other. <laughs> Wait, out. Oh, thank you so much, mate. Thank you. That so was much. incredible.